Hi, so let us try to solve this question. What we have been given is a thin uniform hemispherical shell that has a mass of M and a radius of capital R and it is released from rest from a position as shown in the diagram. So the surface on which the shell is being released is rough enough to cause pure rolling. So if pure rolling is being caused, so V will be equal to R omega and A will be equal to R alpha. We can ensure that, right. And uh, we have to find the normal force and the friction force acting on the shell just after the release. So let me copy the diagram. And the point of contact of the shell with the ground, let us call that point A, the center of mass of the shell, let us call it point C. And obviously, since the hemispherical shell is uniform, the center of mass will be at a distance of R by two from the center of curvature. Let us call the center of curvature to be point O. The initial angular velocity of the hemispherical shell is zero because it is clearly mentioned in the question that we have released this hemispherical shell from a position of rest. So at T is equal to zero, that means just after the release, the weight of the shell will be acting on the center of mass. Well, we know that the weight doesn't only act on the center of mass, the weight acts at every part of the body. But if we have to calculate the torque by the gravitation force or the torque by the weight, we can assume that the all weight, the whole of the weight of the body is concentrated at center of gravity and center of gravity coincides with the center of mass. If the acceleration due to gravity is constant on every part of the body. So that's a whole different derivation, which we have already discussed while studying rotation motion, right? So we can assume uh, while calculating the torque of the weight that the weight is acting at the center of gravity. And in this case, since the acceleration due to gravity is constant, the center of gravity is coinciding with the center of mass, right? So point A, point A will clearly will be the ICR. Actually at this point, every point at this time instant, at this time instant, every point of the body has zero velocity because the body is not moving. So uh, the torque about point A will be moment of inertia of the whole body about point A multiplied by alpha. So there will be two more forces there will be a force called the normal force exerted by the ground on the body A and there will be a force called friction. And we don't know the direction of the friction. The friction can act on the left-hand side and it can act on the right, the right-hand side also. So we are not sure about the direction of the friction force. So let us assume, I'm just assuming that the friction force the static friction force, actually this friction force is static in nature. The static friction force is acting on the point of contact, obviously, and it is acting towards left. And what if the friction is not acting towards left? What if the friction is actually towards right? The answer to this value will become negative. And if the answer to this value becomes negative, that means that the direction that I have assumed is just opposite to the reality, right? So torque about point A, Torque about point A becomes mg multiplied by r by 2. We can clearly see the torque of the normal force about point A will be 0. The torque of the friction force about point A will be 0 because both these forces are passing through point A. And the torque due to weight, the torque due to weight about point A will be mg into r by 2 and it will be in anti clockwise direction equals to. It is equal to the moment of inertia of the body about point A. The moment of inertia of the whole body about point A. Let us consider if the head spherical shell was complete and this was point A. If the spherical had the spherical shell been a complete spherical shell, not hemispherical, but complete spherical shell, the moment of inertia about point A, the moment of inertia about point A would have been 5 by 3 m r squared had the body been a complete sphere. But in this case, we very well know that we have been given a hemisphere. So what I'll do, I'll just take out half portion, half portion of that sphere, take it out, rotate it, and just merge it with the rest of the half. So 
तो मास डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द एक्सेस और विद रिस्पेक्ट टू पॉइंट ए विल नॉट चेंज एंड द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया विल स्टिल रिमेन द सेम अबाउट पॉइंट ए सो वी अगेन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दिस इन द क्लास ड्यूरिंग द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया राइट सो मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया अबाउट पॉइंट ए ऑफ दिस होल हेमिसेरिकल शेल अबाउट पॉइंट ए बिकम्स फाइव बाई थ्री टाइम्स एम आर स्क्वेयर मल्टीप्लाइड बाई अल्फा सिंस द नेट टॉर्क इज इन एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन alpha the angular acceleration will also be in anti clockwise direction so we know that the angular acceleration that this body has is in anti clock direction so the value of alpha the value of angular acceleration becomes 3 by 10 g by r and this is in anti clock direction but we are not interested in alpha we are interested in the value of the normal and the value of the friction force right so let me redraw this diagram again so we know very well that the initial acceleration the initial acceleration of point a the initial acceleration of point a will be towards point o which will be equal to omega square r but at the initial moment since the angular velocity is zero the total acceleration of point a is also zero so since the total acceleration of point a is zero we can observe the acceleration of the center of mass about point a so the separation of center of mass about point a let us consider that separation to be smaller and alpha as we have calculated the alpha alpha is in clockwise direction and alpha Has a value of three by ten, three by ten times g by r. So the acceleration of center of mass, the acceleration of the center of mass about point A will be small r multiplied by alpha because the distance AC. I have considered the distance AC to be equal to small r, right? So the point c so the point c is going to have two components of its acceleration one of the component is going to be horizontal and the other component is going to be vertical and we can clearly see if we assume this angle to be theta it is very obvious by using basic geometry that this angle will also be equal to theta so the component of acceleration of point c in the horizontal direction will be called ac cos theta and the component of acceleration of c in the vertical direction will be called ac sin theta right so ac sin theta becomes small r multiplied by alpha into sin theta and this becomes small r sin theta multiplied by alpha and ac cos theta becomes small r into alpha into cos theta which becomes small r cos theta multiplied by alpha and in the triangle coa in the triangle coa i'm i'm just drawing that triangle coa in the triangle coa it is very obvious that the hypotenuse ac has a length of r and it is very obvious that the length oa is equal to capital r and the length co is equal to r by 2 and this angle has been given as theta it is very obvious that it is very obvious that small r cos theta equals capital r and small r sin theta equals r by 2 so the acceleration of center mass in the vertical becomes small r sin theta which is basically r by 2 times alpha and acceleration of the center of mass in the horizontal direction is r cos alpha r cos theta into alpha and r cos theta is capital r into alpha substituting the value of alpha this becomes 3 by 20 times g i beg your pardon 3 by 20 times g and this becomes again 3 by 10 times g right so we have calculated the acceleration of center of mass in the vertical direction and in the horizontal direction 
by using some basic geometry and by using a is equal to r alpha right so drawing the free body diagram we assumed we already know that the weight of the body is acting downwards the normal the normal let me just copy this diagram it will be easier for me right we know that the acceleration of center of mass is towards left and towards left the acceleration of center of mass has a value of 3 by 10 g and we also know that acceleration of center of mass has a component vertically downwards and the component pointing vertically downwards the acceleration of center of mass which is pointing vertically downwards is nothing but 3 by 20 g so net force in the vertical direction equals mass into net acceleration in the vertical direction so it is very obvious that the gravitational force is going to dominate over the normal force so gravitational force minus the normal force barabar mass of the body into acceleration of the body in the vertical direction so the value of normal force will come out to be 17 by 20 times mg this is the value of the normal force just after the release and since we know that the center of mass has a horizontal acceleration towards the left so the net force on the body in the horizontal direction has to be towards left so this ensures that the friction force which is the only force basically acting in the horizontal direction has to be towards the left hand side which will cause the center of mass to be to accelerate towards left hand side so net force in the horizontal direction equals mass of the body into acceleration of the body in the horizontal direction so there's that we have calculated the value of the normal force just after the release and the value of friction force just after the release on the hemispherical shell by the rough surface 